Hey, welcome back to Questions Over Coffee. My name's Kevin Smith. It's good to see you again. Want a cup of coffee? Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss anything that's coming up on Questions Over Coffee. If you have a comment or a question, leave it in the section below and we'll get to it just as fast as we can. Today's question comes from Melissa Baker uh, as an extension of a previous couple of videos that we did uh, dealing with Acts chapter 2 and the, the comment that was made that the Christians had all things in common. Um, Melissa wants to know, does this mean that I need to sell something and give to the needy? Melissa, this is a great question and uh, one that really needs to be uh, looked at. Um, as you mentioned in the comment uh, for that uh, original question, Acts chapter 4 and Acts chapter 5, give us an example of uh, selling property and giving the proceeds to uh, support the needy brethren. Uh, let's take a look at Acts chapter 4, verses 32 through the end of the chapter. And the congregation of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and not one of them claimed that anything belonging to him was his own, but all things were common property to them. And with great power, the apostles were giving testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and abundant grace was upon them all. For there was not a needy person am among them, for all who were owners of land or houses would sell them and bring the proceeds of the sales and lay them at the apostles' feet. And they would be distributed to each as any had need. Now Joseph, a Levite of Cyprian birth, who was also called Barnabas by the apostles, which translated means son of encouragement, and who owned a tract of land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Okay, so what you see here is what you mentioned, Melissa, you know, that they were bringing the land, the, the proceeds for the land and giving it to the apostles and saying, give it to whoever needs it. You know, uh, this was an attitude of gratitude, uh, for lack of a better word. Because what, what this was, um, that these people were grateful for what Jesus had done for them and were seeking to help their brethren that were in town longer than their brethren had intended on being in Jerusalem. Um, they were going through uh, drastic measures to make sure that these brethren that, that were from out of, out of town had what they needed to um, make it through the day in many cases. Um, were all the Christians selling property and, um, and giving it away? Probably not. This is not to say that they were not all grateful for what God had done for them, but like today, some Christians have more possessions, some Christians have more money than others. Um, so it is possible uh, that it is those that were wealthier that were selling land and other things to provide for those that were poor. It certainly does not have to be the case, but that is one option. This is definitely an attitude and a perspective issue. Uh, they, like we said before, they're grateful, you know, uh, and they're looking at this and saying, all these things that I have, they have come from God. They do not belong to me. Let me use it to be a good steward of the things that God has given me. That attitude and that perspective is, is an attitude and perspective that all Christians need to strive for. We need to be good stewards of the things that we have. Um, because just like these Christians in Acts 4, 
we need to realize that the things that are belonging to us, they're not ours. Not really. I mean, they're God's. And he expects us to use them in some way for his glory. Um, maybe that means we sell them and we give the money to so, someone who desperately needs it. Maybe not. Uh, you know, while we, while we were at Harding uh, many moons ago, um, there was a, um, a story going around about Dr. Neller, you know, and, and uh, how he and his wife, early in their marriage, had intended on buying a, a new car because their old car was just that. It was old, and they, they had saved up money. And they went to uh, make the down payment or whatever the case was, but somebody in their congregation needed something. So they prayed about it, they talked about it together, and they gave the money that was for the car to that group, that couple that needed the help. Um, the story goes that this happened more than once. And, uh, you know, the, there was a, a joke that the car, which became known as the Jesus Mobile, was being held together by duct tape and prayer. You know, but by the time we were at Harding, you know, uh, they did already get rid of that car and um, buy another vehicle that was more reliable, let's say. What that did show is that Dr. Neller and his wife had this attitude of, this money is God's money. Let me give it to someone who needs it because they need it more than we need another vehicle. God will get us through God will help us through this. Now, um, I will say that the stories uh, about the Jesus Mobile, Dr. Neller never bragged about it. It was not some, not the stories we heard from him, or at least not that I heard from him. Uh, I heard it from those that ha had uh, heard it. But, you know, maybe God will prompt you to keep something and use the money that you have saved up to replace the something to help those that are in need. Maybe that's the case. You see, the point here is what Paul says in Romans chapter 12. Let's read Romans 12 one and two. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Christians belong to God. Our bodies, our lives, our possessions, everything are because he gave it to us. And they are meant to be a sacrifice on a daily basis for him. Maybe that means giving away something. Maybe that means keeping something longer than we really want to. Maybe that means doing something that we really don't want to do, but needs to be done to provide for those who desperately need help. Uh, whatever the case is, all things in common can mean a lot more than just selling something and giving the proceeds to someone. Maybe it is selling our time 
and giving, giving it to those who desperately need help. So I have a question for you. What do you do to develop an attitude and perspective of, of giving? Leave me a comment in the section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss anything that's coming up on Questions Over Coffee. Thank you for our time together today. I look forward to the next time. Keep pressing forward.